Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize Ben Keeter of Iowa City, who took down Hempstead's Joe Lewis in a technical fall to win his fourth state title in wrestling, only the 32nd time in the history of Iowa State Wrestling Tournament. He's also the seventh to complete an undefeated high school career with an outstanding record of 111 to zero with 105 career bonus point wins. In addition to winning his fourth state title and shattering records in Iowa, Ben also holds a world title in wrestling. Just this summer, he represented Iowa on the world stage and won gold at the Junior Men's Freestyle World Championship. An all-star athlete and senior at Iowa High City High School, Ben excels in more than just wrestling. He has also been a star member of the football, baseball, and track teams. Ben's proudest accomplishment, though, is being a good role model for future wrestlers. He always take, makes time to talk to and take pictures with younger wrestlers at tournaments and makes it a priority to keep things fun. I'm proud of Ben's accomplishments and I join all of Iowa in being proud that he continues to represent our state at the highest levels. I'm also honored that he's chosen to continue his wrestling career in Iowa City at the University of Iowa. Go Hawkeyes. Today is also TCU or Texas Christian University Day at the Capitol in Washington, D.C. As an alum of Harris College of Nursing at TCU, I want to welcome TCU to Washington State. As long as TCU is not playing an Iowa team, I can say, go Frogs. Yesterday, February 26th, the Wall Street Journal released another article about the origins of COVID-19. This time, the Department of Energy has acknowledged that most likely this was a lab leak from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. I remember having a hearing here in the Capitol with the Select Subcommittee on the Coronavirus Pandemic at which we discussed the origins of COVID-19. We were derided, we were ridiculed, as has other members of Congress. I think it's important that we recognize there is such an importance for free speech and especially in healthcare and in medicine and science that a debate is what needs to take place and that we should be careful in who we chastise simply because we don't like the political party that they represent. It was no conspiracy to acknowledge that there was not fur and cleavage sites normal, that there were doubling of amino acids, and that there was gain of function research that had been funded indirectly by the United States government despite a prohibition on gain of function research. And to this day, there has not yet been an intermediate host for SARS-CoV-2, although there was very rapidly with both SARS and MERS. My point is that we need to recognize that we can have differences of opinion and those should not be considered to be radical or conspiracy theorists despite uh, what political party that emanates from. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, I yield back.